Okay, thank you for joining our webinar, uh, Embracing Security Service Edge, Lessons Learned from Our in Industry Leaders' Digital Transformation Journeys. I'm your moderator and host, Brad Laporte, through Lionfish Tech Advisors. And today we're gonna to be going over uh, digital transformation and how challenging it can be, and basically providing best practices on whether to consider for designing, implementing, operating and maintaining you, you, the complex environments that you have in your infrastructure. And we're gonna go through lessons learned from the industry experts that we have today. We have an outstanding cast uh, regarding things that they've experienced and over time and specifically the organizations they've worked with. We're gonna do an evaluation of security service edge tools and best practices. And we're going to provide expertise and skill set needed to run security operations for these types of environments. And then also we're going to go through how to avoid common pitfalls and challenges. And last but not least, my personal favorite, myths and realities as it pertains to securing the service edge. So without further ado, I want to introduce our amazing panel that we have. Um, so with me, I have Sunil Ravi, the security uh, Chief Security Architect with Versa Networks. I have John Taylor, the Director and Principal of Security from Versa Networks. Anuj Dudia, the jo uh, Global Head of SASE Solutions and Services, Versa Networks. And Chris Chirico, we have uh, the Managing Director and Head of Managed Solutions through Crown Castle. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'd love to have you guys just do some brief overview of your backgrounds and uh, what brought you here today. So. Chris, if you don't mind uh, kicking us off, it'd be great. Sure, thanks for having me and, and great to be on this panel. Um, you know, Crown Castle's leading uh, and largest shared communication infrastructure provider out there. I make my way to Crown Castle via an acquisition where prior to that, I was one of the owners and COO of a company called Vergex that had a long standing relationship with Versa Networks, where we built out a multi-tenanted platform and really brought businesses, service providers um, to market quickly, effectively, at least amount of operational drag, utilizing the Versa technology. So um, I like to say we, we were able to um, take the Swiss Army knife of a Versa solution that gives you all these capabilities and made it a Phillips head. But uh, the beauty of where we sit is it's all about SASE now. And uh, we're going to talk through uh, kind of where Versa fits and, and that customer journey. So I'm uh, really excited to be part of this this call and this panel. All right, thank you so much. Uh, JT, you wanna pick up? Yeah, absolutely, right? So once again, thanks for hosting this, Brad. Really do appreciate it. Uh, my name is John Taylor, I go by JT. Um, I have roughly about 20 plus years um, in the industry, primarily in security, uh, doing things, doing everything from whether it be um, you know, integrations, right, and implementations of security products um, all the way up to what, what we do here now at, at Versa, which is really kind of getting out in front of our customers, kind of evangelizing what we do, um, you know, with security, um, evangelizing security in the state that it's in today, right, and then what our solutions really do try to overcome, both current state and, and, and futures and so forth. Uh, have had, like I said, um, you know, through the years done the implementation side, I've been through sales, uh, I have worked for customers who have done multiple um, integrations, right, with different security products, right, and just happy to be here to, to kind of share what the lessons learned, both from the integration side, right, as well as what the customers have experienced with the customers I've been with, right, and their trials and tribulations with integrating new products. Beautiful. I uh, appreciate that. And I also appreciate you telling me basically 90% of everything I needed to know about Versa Network. So you're one of the first <laughs> people that I met uh, within the, the, the group. So I appreciate that and appreciate you being on this council today. I knew Not a problem. You, Thank you, Brad. Yeah. I knew you would you mind educating Absolutely. us on your background? Yes. Um, thank you for having us. Uh, again, a great panel. JT, that microphone sounded stellar. So that, that is that, that sounds very good. Um, <laughs> my name is Anuj Tutia. I, I head the SASE Solutions business here at Versa. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure with, uh, to um, you know partner with uh, esteemed, esteemed companies like Crown Castle and, and Chris. Um, so what, what I get focused on is uh, having specific 
uh, go to market, the models, the use cases, the the problems that today's markets have that SASE can solve. Um, I'm extremely focused on SASE uh, from a career standpoint. Versa has been an excellent journey. Before that, I worked at uh, various service providers and uh, software vendors. So I think the time is ripe to educate um, all of our customers, partners, uh, anyone who wants to know uh, what are the real problems SASE is trying to solve out there. And excited to be here, Brad. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Sunil. Yeah, hi. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you for having me on this panel here. Uh, my name is Sunil Ravi. I'm Chief Security Architect for Versa Networks. I've been with Versa since day one, and um, my core focus is security. Versa has been founded with the core principle that there's no network worth having without security built in. So I was right uh, from day one of the action building all the security capabilities that are part of the platform right now. And uh, I had a long, like, 25 years of experience, you know, building security in various uh, types of products and delivering them as our products and services. Glad to be here and uh, be part of the lively discussion. All right, Proof. perfect. And uh, regarding my background, uh, previously worked at Gartner, so Gartner veteran covering uh, the SSC and SASE spaces, as well as cloud security and managed services and all sorts of other areas, and now provide uh, uh, go-to-market consulting for um, cybersecurity and information technology companies, um, as well as hosting this webinar. So let's de let's dive into it. Uh, so we have five core topics that we're going to dive into, as I stated, and we're going to spend about five to ten minutes on each topic, and basically instill as much wealth as we can with our uh, our viewers here. So I'm going to start off with uh, challenges and specifically diving into what some of the challenges are that your customers have had prior to working with you as a solution provider. I know you've worked with hundreds, if not thousands of uh, organizations over the years and a lot of lessons learned captured. So uh, Chris, I was wondering if you could just start us off and just kind of give you some of your experiences that you've had. Yeah, sure. And um, knowing that JT goes by JT. Um, it explains why we had so many register, you know, people register for this webinar. They thought Justin Timberlake was going to be one of the panel <laughs> uh, guests. So um, that's one way to market. Um, you know, first I'd just say that where you start and where you end are two separate things, and and that's one of the um, core themes we've seen throughout the market is that you know starting um, is is relative to the customer's needs. Um, the other thing would just be what we found is that you know, there's a lot of buzz and there's a lot of hype that's in the market. Understanding what is driving those type of behaviors or what's driving that market trend is you know, equally as important to the solution, the technologies that you uh, ultimately start to select. And that goes into, again, where you start versus where you finish um, could be a journey, not just a transformation, because transformation sometimes feels abrasive versus, again, starting to look at, you know, what do we know about the market? We know that branches have started to, or organizations start to use SaaS applications. We know that. That's, that's early to why SD-WAN became, you know, paramount to those WAN transformations. We know that. The second thing we know, and, and Sunil brought up, you know, how Versus had security integrated into their code from the very beginning, we know that the attack surface is just growing. We know that there's bad actors out there, and now we know that customers are having a lot of different selections um, from how they manage their network, how they look at their cloud, how they look at their security posture. And what that means is that there's a lot of vendor sprawl that's out there. So, you know, one of the challenges that we've seen is just how do you filter through that noise and how do you start somewhere and ultimately graduate into a full SASE type architecture and solution. Um, and, you know, as you start to approach things of, you know, how do you bite off something small and start to kind of lean into that transformation? Um, it really starts with understanding what that end state looks like, but also reflecting on what you're currently in and how do you start to kind of feather in new technologies, new architectures, and new solutions that bring you into that full end state in mind. So, you know, some of the challenges just quickly to reiterate is just understanding that you don't have to do everything at once. Um, understanding that that vendor sprawl is real, and we know that there's uh, probably 
10 times more bad actors out there than good actors. So, you know, as you start to go through the challenges, it's understanding who's the right technology, but also who's the right partner to make sure that when things do go wrong, how do you combat that? And and that really is driving that consolidation of network and security coming into one. Um, so I, and you know, I'd be interested on, you know, Anuja's side of things as well, because they, you know, they've seen uh, similar uh, things in the market. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Um, actually, Chris was spot on. Uh, one of the things I want to double click on what Chris said, right, is expansion of attack surface. That is an absolute reality of today's uh, markets and today's use cases. Um, uh, thanks to what has happened in the last three, four years from a hybrid work environment, it is truly hybrid where uh, remote work is half the week. So the um, SaaS deployments or SaaS adoption has skyrocketed. Uh, in, what does that mean for the IT organizations or from the security architect standpoint? That securing multi-cloud environments, having internet-bound security as well as the corporate uh, access to the corporate applications is more than ever more than ever important. In fact, um, what one thing that is we are seeing uh, relatively new in the market in less, last 24 to 36 months, and pandemic has played a role in that, is what is the employee productivity is how is it getting hit while protecting this multi-cloud environment or multi-platform environment and for that sassy or 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 more precisely unified sassy that that combines the branch and um the remote workforce use cases are getting even more critical we're seeing that more and more together as we are partnering with uh um, uh, you know, service providers and enterprises across the world. So it's been a, a, a massive learning journey. And, and uh, there are some very good uh, solution or platform oriented solutions uh, that, that are out there that we can help uh, solve these problems. So I'll leave it at that. And then we'll get more chances to dive deeper into use cases and other good discussions. Great stuff. Uh, JT, I know you're very passionate about this space, right? So. <laughs> Uh, you know, I personally, I, I, I love the, you know, the crawl, walk, run aspect of it. A lot of people, they try to, you know, <laughs> eat a, eat a cheeseburger through a straw, you know, uh, on day one, which doesn't work well, right. For anybody, but, um, love to hear your experiences too. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's, there, there's a couple of things, right. That are out there. Number one is there's the, uh, we start with the fact of, especially with the SSE side of the house, everybody's architecture is a little bit different, right? At the end of the day. And so when, when you're going in front of a customer, right? And, and whether you are just pitching your solution or whether you have already, you know, won the deal, right? And so forth. There's a lot of education that has to go in with that customer to understand not every architecture, right? Is the exact same, right? And there are some people have different ways of doing certain things. And so... A lot of customers do a lot of research around, you know, what they want, how they want it, you know, when they want it deployed, right, and so forth. And when they when they do that, they, um, you know, they they come to the table and they say they they have an understanding, and it's not a wrong understanding, right? It might be a wrong understanding of your platform and how it does something, but it's not a wrong understanding of what the end result is. So a lot of times, right, when I have customers that have issues and in, in working with myself as an integrator, right, or, or, or a product, right, or something like that, and I'm guilty of this as myself, right, when I used to work for customers, is you're, you're not coming in and, and, and trying to have that particular, you know, whether it be an integrator or that particular manufacturer, educate you on how they do it, right, to achieve the same result. Your expectation is, is they do it the same way as the next guy, right? So I think that's probably the, the hardest thing, right, to, to kind, of, kind of work for, when, when someone actually, you know, when I engage with customers, right, you know, both on the integration side, right, and now as I um, engage with them more on the, the evangelistic side and the education side is really just kind of showing them, you know, what the differences are in the market, what the same result is in which they want to, but understanding what might be the best, the best path, right, or what is the, the, the better paved road. Right. Is it better to go down a two lane road to get to your destination? Right. Or is it better to go down a four lane highway? Right. At the end of the day to get to your destination. Right. Just to make sure you're getting the same result. Right. Going forward. So it's like I said, it's really hard, you know, on that side. But it's also very rewarding. Right. You know, because once you get to the end destination, your customers 
the light bulb goes off, right? You know, they actually understand what they're trying to get to, right? And they see how you do it. Um, then it's it's easier for them, right, to even do more adoption, right? Because now, no matter what platform they have, right, they want more from that platform, right? They want to be able to continually evolve that platform. It's not going to be a stagnant platform. And then they start looking at how they can start integrating other pieces into that platform as well, right? So now it becomes a cornerstone for them versus it just becoming a tool. Yeah, that's spot on, spot on. So uh, Sunil, I was wondering if you could just double click on the technical side of the house. So one of the things we haven't really hit was, okay, you get everything off and running. What about scalability? What about agility? You know, what are the different functionalities of SSE that we that really could make this a powerhouse? Yeah, that, that's a great uh, great topic to write dive into the details. Uh, so definitely, you know, the, uh, the the approach that we have seen heading into it, uh, this whole uh, space uh, ten years ago, we have seen you know silos where networking and security were actually addressed in two different uh, type of like you know different problem sets and. Um, you know, and rightfully so, because, you know, the, the performance of the scalability was not like built into the products uh, to begin with. So so we, we actually had to come up with a, a unique, you know, integration model, right, where we have the right architecture to, uh, to kick off, where we can actually rapidly innovate and add more networking and security functions, you know, to the platform and make it available to both networking and security teams, both at the same time. So that you know, we are not actually trying to disrupt or like change the way things uh, are done too much, but you know, people can slowly grow into the platform and um, and actually try to scale up and then build it up to the to the place where it need to be. Uh, and so, sort of like the industry uh, trends going on at the time were also the software defined aspect of uh, everything from networking to computing to storage and data centers, right? So. We actually, you know, uh, caught on that, um, you know, early on because, um, you know, traditionally networking security functions were delivered as a hardware platform, and you know that inherently has a limitation of, um, you know, hitting the ceiling pr pretty quickly, and then we, and then if we need to like scale it up fast, you know, rolling out, you know, hardware devices was um, a painful and slow process. So software defining all of these functions into a platform. You know, provided us the the right ability and the and the architecture to be able to rapidly scale up to the to, to the needs of the market, whether it be like you know 100 megabits per second or you know 10 gig, you know, 50 gig, 100 gig, or multiple hundreds of gigs, delivering all these features and capabilities. Uh, you know, it's the software defined approach is the, is the right approach to go with. And again, you know, going back to the approach people were taking earlier, where you know, things were like, you know, in the hardware form factors and things were slow, you know, people that don't have to be like, uh, you know, siloed anymore, right? Because, you know, we have like a software defined platform that enables like these teams to, you know, adopt it and go much faster, you know, in terms of like how they, you know, roll out, you know, network and security capabilities, regardless of how big or how widespread their footprint is uh, in the digital uh, uh, space. That's all great points. Appreciate that. So um, I think I think we've captured all the challenges uh, and certainly the benefits of SSE and just kind of the wrap up. Number one, as we transition to number two, we talked about uh, enhanced security posture. We talked about crawl, walk, run. Uh, and we having better control and protection across your entire environment, consistency across distributed or hybrid environments. Having simplicity, specifically network simplicity and redu reduction of that complexity. We talked about remote access. We talked about enhanced visibility, scalability, and agility, and operating across operational silos and reducing those silos, uh, both from an organizational and technical manner and making everything just a lot more easier, right? So uh, advancing the conversation into number two, um, Talking about key lessons learned. So from your experience as a solution provider, you know, certainly helping organizations as they go through their digital transformation initiatives, you know, you know, how do we how do you ensure there's protection of users, data, and applications? And uh, this this one's near and dear to my heart, so I'm gonna go first. So uh, selfishly, but um, hopefully everyone agrees with me. But 
Um, I, I always advise people, and after having thousands of conversations while working at Gartner in the years since, um, it really came down to the core element that you have to begin with the end in mind. And you have to have that holistic plan and strategy first before you jump into the pool. And a lot of people don't do that. Unfortunately, that's like the last thing they think of. And specifically, you need to understand all of your core use cases before you drive into this. So you have to do it first and not last. And a lot of organizations, as I've worked with, they've already picked their shiny object, uh, you know, because their best friend told them to do it. And then they, you know, ended up going down this rabbit hole and, you know, they, they, they ended up consuming that cheeseburger through the straw uh, on day one and, and things all got uh, all upside down real quick. Um, so there's a lot of certainly a lot of heartache with that. And I want a lot of, a lot of people to avoid that, that core lesson learned. Um, Anuj, I know you're very passionate about this as well. So yes. uh, love, I'd love you to take the mic and, uh, and share some knowledge. Absolutely. This is, uh, this is extremely important. And I want to, I want to kind of reiterate what you just said, right? The end goal in mind. So what we need to do as an, as an industry, as a, as a partnership model with every enterprise, every service provider out there is be obsessed with the use cases around security. Um, what do, what do I understand or what do, what, what have I learned from end end state in mind? Are you starting with a use case one, say remote, remote workforce enablement or hybrid workforce enablement or securing the branches uh, with the cloud strategy in mind, like in as as SSC would do it. All right. Do you have both solutions in mind as an end goal, or are you are you looking at e everything in silos? So these things are very important to be, like I said, to be obsessed with those use cases and an end goal. Uh, that culminates into the soup of um, acronyms that are out there. Uh, it, you know, all vendors, all service providers out there will throw in SWAG, Secure Web Gateway, Firewall as a Service, DLP, CASB, RBI, and I can go on and on. At the end of the day, what are the most critical elements for your use case or your business? In my experience, um, working across hundreds of hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of customers across um, um, the globe, it boils down to do you want to enable zero trust network access from the from the cloud? That means as simple as uh, my my um, specific application to user micro tunnel is segmented in a way that it's extremely secure, no matter where you uh, where you access it from. Firewall the service. I want anti malware, anti um, ransomware, uh, unified threat management. All of this. Do I just want to centralize it from the cloud? Probably I do. So those are the things that we need to we need to kind of be uh, very precise about. Is CASB important to me? Do, do I want to go to DLP? And then last but not the least, do I want a unified strategy? I'll draw a line here because if you're obsessed with understanding the use cases of transformation to make sure that right security elements are placed in right places, whether some of it is in the branch, all of it is in the cloud, and the reality is somewhere in between. And can a vendor, can a service provider um, kind of deliver that whole solution in an elegant way? Those are the key things that actually solve 80, 90% of problems. Then the POC and deployment becomes 10 times easier. But uh, knowing those feature sets corresponding to the business needs is critical part of this uh, planning journey around SSC. That's outstanding. Um, so Neil, do you have any input here? I know you have tons of experience, decades of experience to add here. Any lessons learned to highlight? Yep, hundred percent. Yeah. So this is actually very, uh, very important insights that I actually want to share uh, as we came through this journey of, um, you know, rolling out um, SASE for various uh, different customers. Uh, so definitely, you know, the uh, the the objective here is to have the end goal in mind and. Um, and you know, if you consider like SASE, how it's it's been positioned, right? It, it's an architecture, right? It's it's not really a product that you're adopting; it's an architecture, right? And uh, and and the key point of that, you know, becoming an architecture, is the architecture provides you a platform to enable you know more and more and more capabilities as you proceed along with the, with the SASE journey, right? And the thing is that you know, no matter what, you know, things are going to change rapidly. You're going to get new 
requirements, the you know the whole um, you know uh, uh, environment is is going to grow. Your uh, digital landscape is going to like expand from you know your branch offices, headquarters, to private data centers, to public clouds, and geographically as well. And as you actually go uh, along the digital journey along the cloud, you know you actually adopt more. Uh, infrastructure and uh, platforms and uh, and software as a service, right? Uh, and as the things are, are changing, you you need uh, uh, to have like a, a an architecture that is actually you know very strong and expansive to kind of like extend your digital footprint, you know, securely, you know, wherever your your your, your uh, footprint grows, right? So so that is kind of like the long term vision that you have you need to have, you know, because um, you know when you know the um, the iPhone came along. Initially, you know it, it came out as uh, as just like an like an iTunes player, right, and a music player. And see how it's evolved, you know, over time to the to the to the place where it is today, right. So that's the type of approach I would take, you know, for the um, uh, for the SASE architecture as well, you know, because you know the types of like applications, the types of data access, and the types of like different types of uh, Ways the, the the users actually access these applications and use applications, and the the way we have to like you know secure the data and the applications of the devices used by the users, the identities, it's only going to grow and it's only going to get more complex. You know, so so we need to take a holistic approach of uh, a, pro a product versus platform play, right? You know, a product or a single point product, you know, is not you know scalable anymore. You know, you need to have like a an architecture a platform that provides the right architecture where you know as you go through this journey right it enables your teams and your, your teams also are expected to grow as you actually adopt more and more you know uh, te technology and infrastructure into your enterprise you know uh, you have to you know uh, select a platform that provides you know that capability to extend you know your network and your security because they go hand in hand, right? Because today, if you take the modern application, you know it's well integrated with the networking and the internet and the cloud, right? You can't think of a of an application that is without any of these elements, right? And um, and for and and that brings user experience in, into the into the focus, you know. So you cannot really think about okay, yeah, I have uh, you know full, fully secured it, but um, you know if it lacks experience that needs it needs to be uh, needs to provide, you know, it's going to Create the bottlenecks, and it's the other way around too, right? You know, you, you actually like build the application and, and integrate the user experience, you know, to the, to the way it needs to be. And if that is all not secure, then you know, then we're we're not getting you know where we need to be. So, to to get to the end goal, we need to actually have both the the networking and security and user experience, everything combined, and then you know uh, proceed with uh, with the right you know. Platform and architecture approach that uh, enables you to get there. Yeah. Wow. Perfect. Hey, Brad. Said. Sorry, I was just going to add that. Yeah, that I think what I'm also hearing is there's a lot of education. We know that there's a lot of buzzwords. There's a lot of acronyms. Anu said that. I just say as much as we were educating on SD WAN. Next thing you know, people said, "Well, now I got SASE. I don't need SD WAN." Now you have SD or SASE being spoken about. Now all of a sudden we're getting into SSE. Um, there's a lot of education from the lessons learned. We still have to educate. We still have to clarify what those use cases are. Um, but where we sit just as a provider, it's about where do we connect? How do we secure and how do we optimize? And like when you start to think through the whole, you know, networking and security and how all these edges and, and or service edges are playing into a business's um, capabilities and what they're looking to run from their own business process standpoint, um, you know, it really is about where do you tie in the products and the services to the overall framework that Sunil was talking about. And I think that's really important just from the lessons learned of what we've seen is you don't have to bite off everything at once. And we're still hearing uh, customers say, I've got a VPN, I don't need SASE or you know, I've got, uh, as an example, I've got Netscope. I don't need SD-WAN. And, and what we're trying to help educate in the market is there's cloud security, there's networking components, but if you're looking to have an integrated unified view for how you manage 
uh, your networking and security kind of apparatus of the organization, then that's truly a unified SASE architecture and capability. So I think part of this discussion, just for the viewers and people that are listening in here, as we are educating and having these discussions, discussions, we've already clarified in the market that SASE is that convergence of network and security. There's also agreement now that's saying to have a best in class technology, it has to be unified, meaning you don't want to have four or five different technologies being brought to you from a provider because that gets into how are packets being inspected, how are they routing, how are they being optimized, and like that's the end to end use case that every business is trying to solve right now. It's about how do I get my users to get to that application? How are my branches communicating to where they need to go? How's my WAN being transformed? And and that all comes back to a center of how do you have a unified view with the technology that you've selected. So I would just encourage people that are on this journey to understand that, yes, there is a network and security convergence. But once you get to that place and you start to look through who's the provider, who's the technology, then you have to get into, is it unified? Or as a provider bolted on various technologies like Palo Alto or Fortinet and Versa and you know, every other technology that's out there to meet those use cases, um, because that opens up other challenges along the way as well. So um, it was a best back to you. Just want to give a little feedback on uh, the provider lens here. <laughs> Brad, um, I know um, I know you have a flow in mind. Uh, there's a, there are a couple of very interesting questions that are live being posted. I'll just use five seconds to kind of answer one of them. Uh, someone asked about user experience. And how does um, you, they want to hear panels uh, take on visibility and security observability? I'm glad, by the way, I'm glad for asking that question because the, um, if you if you think about the narrative that Chris gave, it's very clear that that unification, both on the observ observability as well as um, a one unified unified um, pain to manage the whole solution with a common platform to configure. That's a game changer because what happens is user experience has two flavors, at least in my, in, in my opinion. The first is the end user's experience to get to the app in the most secure way. W what if I add all these security buzzwords and the latency to reach to the app is double, triple, or quadrupled? It doesn't do any good to the productivity uh, landscape. On the other hand, the, the other so so basically that unification is important. I think your question was about user experience on the on the management and GUI as well. That unification, because of the common data lake, that strategy is very critical. So everything we have said so far in terms of why that unified SASE view is so critical is because you also get that visibility that is completely unified. Otherwise, not only there are different panes of glass, but there is through break and inspect and and do a diff different um, stopovers at the technology highway, and that ruins the whole user experience. Who cares about just reaching that SaaS app um, in the most secure way? So, so that user experience is extremely critical. And uh, uh, I'll just punt to uh, uh, you know give the uh, mic to Sunil because in the same question, it's being asked what what do you think about frameworks like NIST? And special pubs like 800, 207, and zero trust architecture. Brad, I, I wouldn't uh, ruin the flow. I just want to let you make that yeah. call. But these were the two questions being asked. No, I appreciate That's that. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, we've addressed uh, those questions. Um, so, JT, can you bring us home on this item that we have, item number two? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, one of the things that that I will say, and I actually keep a slide for this, right? When I used to do postmortems, right? Um, you know, after the after the implementation, right, of, of any type of, of technology, right, through, through whether it be SSE or however, um, is you know the number one thing that customers come back with is the speed in which they implement it, right? And and that usually correlates back to planning. I cannot stress enough: planning is the most critical part of any type of implementation, much less of what we're doing with SSE, right? So my, my, you know, Brad, you said it earlier, right? With the last question of crawl, walk and run, right? You know, a lot of customers and we, we're all guilty of this, right? I've done it before in my career is I want to have it done. I want to have it done in a month, right? It needs to be up. It needs to be running, right? Yes, absolutely. Got to be done right, right now. now. 
and, oh, and that God. usually correlates to cor- correlates out to a, like a run fall bleed scenario, right? You know, we're we're taking off, we're running, right? All of a sudden, we hit the rock. We're we're now on the ground, and then we got to go backwards and try to figure that out. So, a lot of customers, what ends up happening is is they take out of the gate, right? They're running as fast as they can. They find out that either the configuration or the way they're implementing it or something like that is actually flawed. It wasn't properly planned out, right? Because there was such an aggressive time frame. So when I look at customers, right, and I always go in with that slide is you have to give yourself the appropriate amount of time, right, to be able to implement a solution, right? Or at least if you're going to implement it in such an aggressive time frame, you have to have a way to at least come back to that solution to be able to groom it appropriately, right? So that crawl, raw, can run mentality is absolutely crucial. Right. Like I said, that's the number one things that that I come back with with any customer is all about how the planning happened. Right. The, usually in the time frames. Right. And so forth, because that's always what trips us up. Yeah. I've also heard you say in the past uh, measure twice, cut once. Right. So, yes. Always, always testing, planning, testing, that. always make sure before you go into the next step everything is tested appropriately because you're going to come back and all of a sudden you find something wrong. And then wait a minute, maybe we have to re-architect how this works. And that puts a complete stop on everything. Right. Yeah. We don't want that. Yeah. Always account for variable change, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you can't, can't uh, change the flight pattern once the plane's taken off. So just to recap the item number two, we'll jump to number three, Uh, holistic planning and strategy. You know, begin with the end in mind. You know, nothing happens as fast as you want it to. Uh, prioritize all your use cases first. Tools won't solve everything. Uh, it requires people, process, and technology. Uh, make sure you do a thorough evaluation and selection of your solution providers and um, leveraging all the, the features and functionality that come with SSC, which we did a deep dive on, uh, which, so I won't reiterate that. And um, most importantly, Try to avoid run, fall, bleed. So that's now going on. Uh, I'm going to make a T-shirt that's going to say that. So I'll send you the I images that. I have for it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So item number three, uh, skill set and expertise, right? So the stuff doesn't just uh, run itself. So what is um, what have you seen is essential for running security operations effectively um, You know, with the, the context of supporting your organizations as they navigate this? Um, Anuj, do you have any uh, things that you want to kick us off with, especially since you're talking about the standards and frameworks? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, the Security Operations Center will, um, I'll, I'll uh, uh, in, in, a, in about 10 seconds, I'll give the floor to Chris. He, he must be an expert in that. But basically, when we talk about the end-to-end operational flow, right, um, everything from the workflow uh, it's the product ease of use, but even the end-to-end service delivery in uh, conjunction with the framework, which Sunil can even cover from the NIST perspective, uh, that is critical. Um, this sounds We sound like a broken record at times, but that end goal in mind and that end-to-end um, uh, vision, right? That also falls into how this whole service will be delivered. In fact, one of the questions uh, again was asked is, is, SD, is, is SASE better or SSC? Um, it's, uh, it, it, it makes me smile because we, we discussed this internally as well. Um, SSC and SASE are kind of not completely exclusive. Um, what, you know, loosely how the industry goes for it is, and I think the question also alludes to that, is SD-WAN plus cloud security together would be a SASE strategy. So it's not one is better than the other, it what suits your needs. Uh, but if you look from a long-term vision perspective, with the, with the zero trust architecture in mind at every every point uh, uh, where the user or the application is, then going with a SASE strategy or a unified strategy is way more critical from a big picture standpoint. Does not mean you start with SSC or cloud security and then look at SD-WAN or vice versa. And that's where I'll, I'll, I'll kind of hand it over to Chris too, because that end-to-end planning, service delivery, maintenance and management is equally, if not more important, from day two onwards. Chris, what are, what are your thoughts around that? Uh, well, I'd say 
in this market, it's a big market. That's why we're all trying to play in it. And there's a lot of hype and excitement, but um, you don't win these deals based on your selling capability. You, you win these deals based on your operational capabilities and expertise. So understanding, um, you know, the the core expertise that's needed to support these type of services and discussions are really paramount in being able to win in that that customer conversation. Um, but it, you know, from a SOC standpoint, I just say SSC is not a quote unquote SOC service. I mean, and as we go through these decision points, you know, what security folks are looking for is how do I bolt on these SASE type capabilities that will feed into my operational security posture. And that's where you, know, you gotta have the expertise around, you know, how are logs being ingested? What's the run book look like? What, you know, how do I now enhance my XDR platform or whatever that a actual SOC currently offers internally or, or through some sort of MSP. Um, so yeah, I just say that as customers are starting to, or partners are starting to look at, how do I bolt on SSE and, and SASE framework or graduate into a SASE type architecture or framework, it's understanding where these products and services fit into an overall security posture. And then ultimately, how do you layer in these services with the least amount of operational drag? That will expose different conversations about, you know, what your compliance is. And again, how do you ingest certain logs and alerts? And then where does this feed into maybe an AI or an ML based capability that will enhance the SD-WAN as an example, right? Like if a customer selected that, how do you now bolt on now an SSE capability that feeds into your SOC posture and can now utilize a, as an example, Versa AI or ML to now enhance where I see something, let me go activate or take a proactive measure. So I think that expertise needs to be understood. And also, again, realizing that you know, security is a tough sale because it's so critical. There's no security or CISO out there that will get on a webinar. Next thing you know, they tell their team, just go rip, replace whatever they're doing. So understanding how we enhance that security posture at the branch, as an example, or optimize and enhance the security at, let's say, their cloud, because we know that they're doing more of a prem to cloud posture or, or transition, and then starting to get into, well, how do I add security? How do I now not remove what you have, but enhance it, and then ultimately build that kind of camaraderie between us as a provider or a technology partner with the internal security that builds uh, the mind share with those stakeholders, but it also gives you that street cred with the customer because you understand their pain points. Um, I think that's really important for folks to realize, because um, if not, if you just go in trying to replace security, uh, what what you'll end up seeing is the customer already has a posture that they're protecting. Um, and then you get into a, a different discussion, right? Where it's kind of like, well, here's what we do versus what you're already doing. And that's not the appropriate uh, conversation we want to have. We want to have a, where are you trying to go? This maps back to the first, you know, two questions. What is that use case? What is that journey? And then ultimately, where do we both in and enhance with what we can do? And then what does that end state look like? And and as you start to go through that, you'll start to wean out, you know, what's the right technology, what's the right provider, um, because you'll be able to have that type of dialogue. I think that's really important. Great. JT, I mean, you trained me, so you must know everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing, um, nothing yeah. at all. <laughs> um, I think one of the big things that you, you have to, or skill sets that, really kind of need right and, and so forth um when implementing and of course maintaining um the, the solution right is you, you, number one is you, you've got to understand not just how security works right and what you're trying to do you got to understand the whys behind it right you know because when someone comes in and says i want to be able to stop a particular threat or i want to be able to stop a particular type of traffic right we can do that. We can do that very easy, right? Because we all know the policies, we know ports, we know applications, right? And we can actually put that in place. But what are we really trying to achieve, right? At the end of the day, are we trying to do this based upon a PCI compliance? Are we based? Are we starting to do this based upon NIST compliance, right? Are we starting to? Uh, why, right? Is 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 critical there because what can end up happening is is the reverse, right? We start allowing certain types of traffic, right? We start allowing things to happen. With 
environment. Right. And then because we're allowing that to really happen, right, we could actually be violating a compliance, right, or some type of standard in which we have to meet, right, you know, per some, whether it be a federal regulation, right, or it be a governmental regulation, you know, outside the boundaries of the U.S., right, or something of that nature, right? So we have to understand not the, 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 key, the key critical component there is understanding the why, right? We are actually, you know, doing what we are doing at the end of the day, right, to making sure that we're absolutely secure, also understanding, you know, the why, because that particular type of traffic could open up a hole, may, maybe not violate a compliance, right, or some type of regulation, but could actually, you know, open yourself up to some type of vulnerability, i.e. a ransomware attack, right, or something of that nature, right? So kind of keeping in mind the reasons why we're doing what we're doing within the system itself, right, understanding the compliances, understanding the risk, right, that is associated to any type of traffic that we're, um, that we're actually, you know, uh, kind of allowing, right, or denying kind of going through, right? And then understanding from that, right, you know, the, the backside is how to monitor that traffic, right? How do I see an indicator of compromise, right, if I do make changes, right, within the system? How do I properly, you know, set my SIM or how do I properly set the SSE system, right, to, uh, to log that, right, and flag it if something is wrong and how do I identify stuff like that? I'd say those are basically the two big things, right? We need to that, that we do have to um, kind of keep in mind, right? Is that understanding of the reasons why, and then also the ability to identify, right? You know, if a threat does pose itself due to any type of change that we make within the environment itself. That's great stuff. Um, so we have about fifteen minutes left. I want to make sure we have enough time for the last few sections. Uh, Sunil, do you have anything very quick about uh, skills and expertise that you'd like to add? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll be quick. Um, so my two cents, you know, towards the, you know, skill set is, you know, we need to make, you know, keep think, things simple and stupid. And, you know, bottom line is, you know, that's what we need to do. And so that actually, you know, uh, increase, the, increase the adoption of these new technologies, even for, you know, people who are not up to speed with a lot of the things. And the second thing I would like to um, emphasize is, we always need to be standards based and we build off of like what you know has been tried and trusted over the years so that we actually go from where we are to a natural transition to the next state and um you know we go in deterministic phases from one state to the next to the next and you know charting out the course right and even when we have like these new technologies that are coming in you know we actually you know keep an eye out for all the standards bodies like NIST and um uh, you know, where uh, new new architecture, uh, zero trust architecture and this controls or security or networking. So we actually adopt all these uh, open standards based technologies into the new platform and mm -hmm. deliver that, you know, in a way that, you know, people are, can get their head, head wrapped in our head. Yeah, I know what I'm doing and, you know, what I know what this new technology is. I can chat out the course, easily map it from where I am to where I need to be, right? So that that is a key element of um, innovating in a way that is a natural extension for where things are, you know. So we make incremental progress towards um, the new technologies that, that enable all these uh, new capabilities and new ways of um, improving your digital infrastructure while at the same time securing all this infrastructure. I appreciate so Brad, that. Um, yeah, speaking of speaking of new technologies and new new infrastructure that uh, Sunil alluded to, right? Um, perfect time to look at the question that just came in about IoT, and and uh, it's a yep. hot use case. Um, I'll just use ten seconds because I think there is a tremendous market as well as tremendous attack surface with the things or IoT coming in into the ITOT industry in general. So the capabilities of the SSC to make sure that we are um, have the right device fingerprinting is the is the security in the LAN, WAN, or cloud depends on where are your IoT devices. Um, that kind of consultation, that kind of learning is very critical. The key question is not what product is right for me. The key question is what solution, what platform, what service is right for me. Because when you look at these um, IoT devices, are you identifying the, are, are you device fingerprinting it at a, a layer two or a LAN level and then blocking it right there? You're taking some of these things to the cloud. Is your IoT devices 
5G enabled or, or uh, cellular enabled uh, that is outside, what are the, do, does an IoT device need to access internet applications? Maybe it is only, uh, only should have access to two specific applications. So you provide the zero trust architecture for that uh, kind of um, uh, device categories or, or, or persona. So these are the things that the platform should have the granularity and the service should have end-to-end -end capability to support. So those, th that, that was an interesting question. Of course, there are some specifics mm -hmm. around some vendors and stuff mentioned, which, which is probably we can take offline. Yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah, and if anyone has any questions after the webinar, please reach out to us. We're all any one of us are happy to answer uh, with you and, and take some time. Uh, I'm going to move on to section four with uh, you know the time remaining that we have. So we have uh, two questions. Um, section four is uh, or question number four is uh, myths and myths and, and misconceptions. So there's a lot of confusion around SSC, especially as it grows in popularity. Uh, I feel like I, I hear something new every day. Um, I'm just going to start with my my first, which is it's a set it and forget it solution. So obviously that's not the case. Uh, as we just discussed uh, over the past couple of minutes, it's obviously very complex. Uh, well, it's not necessarily. It makes things make uh, SSC makes it a lot easier uh, to automate and streamline everything, but it's still you know it's not something you just push an easy button and all of a sudden it deploys and and all, all of this pain goes away overnight. Uh, it does require a lot of effort, but um, yeah, I don't know if anyone wants to take this uh, uh, and, and kick us off, but uh, appreciate it. I'll say one thing about it, right? So I think that, there, and, there's, and, and we've even said it on this call today, right? Is that a lot of people think that, you know, SASE and or SSE kind of is the same thing, right? Across the board. And we've kind of used those terms here, you know, kind of interchangeably, right? One of the big things that we kind of need to make sure of is, is that we know SSE, right, is, is the security solution, right, that SASE employs, right? The only difference is, is that there's not an edge solution that's there, like an SD-WAN solution, right? This is, this is purely the security solution, right, going forward. SASE is the adoption, right, or the integration of SD-WAN with that, right? So now you're getting an edge platform. You're getting an easy way um, to, to integrate, right, with your SSE platform, um, and in the case of, of a unified platform, right, you even can you, you can actually bridge that that cloud infrastructure together and make it look like a mesh network. Right. So um, I have a lot of customers who come to me and they'll interchange SASE and they actually mean SSE. Right. Or they'll tell me SSE and they're like. Not SASE. Right. So one of the things it, it's an education, right, that we have within the market itself um, and. You know, I, I think vendors right across the board can do a better job of really kind of stating what, you know, what those differences are. But it is to kind of keep in mind, right, is that there are vendors out there who do unified SASE, right? And can you procure an SSE, you know, solution from them? Absolutely, you can do that. Um, in the case of Versa, we do that as well. Um, you can also look at, you know, just the SD-WAN solution and apply multiple different SD-WAN solutions to it. The problem is, is they become disjointed, right, um, you know, across board. Uh, but there is a significant difference between SSE itself and SASE. Great stuff. Uh, Chris, you got any two cents on this? Um, well, I think we hit it. There were um, SSE is SASE, SASE is SD-WAN, SD-WAN is SSE. It's, you know, who's on first, what's on second type stuff. There's that. Um, I also think that we're hearing a lot where I've got SSE, therefore I've got zero trust everywhere or anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, the set it and forget it, one. you know, understanding that it's not set it and forget it. Like it's a evolution over, you know, what your policies, what your end state, you know, all the stuff we've talked about here. Um, those are some of the, the really, you know, big ones. The, the other, you know, concept would be SASE solves everything, um, and and mm -hmm. I think that that's a really big myth, you know, even with SD-WAN. Like, SD-WAN can fix a lot of things. It can't, you know, fix a flappy circuit, as an example. It can give you analytics. It can give you intelligence. It can make you sure that you're routing packets the right way in sessions. But at the end of the day, it's what do you use through that integrated analytics view to be able to make better business decisions, and, and that's really... Yeah, you know, as we start to think through demystifying what's out there, 
it's how do you now have that convergence in that unified view to either A, see what's going on, and B, take a proactive activity to have a unified experience from network and security. Like that's the the end state that we're all striving to get to for our customers and even us as a provider. Um, <laughs> but it's really that this solves all things. Uh, that's, that's one of the big myths that are out there. Um, but, you know, that also opens up the opportunity for uh, whether it's the technology provider, such as the folks on the panel or us as a provider, it's how do we educate through that journey of a educating, demystifying, but ultimately coming with product services and solutions. Um, so yes, there's a lot of myths, but myths uh, also create opportunities for all of us to work with our value customers. All right, uh, all great points, appreciate that. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, if it's okay, wrap up with the last item. Um, uh, item number five, what criteria uh, should organizations consider when evaluating SSC tools? So I know security is obviously a leading uh, use case, right? So you have firewalls, IDS, IDP, uh, secure web gateways, you have DLP, ZTNA, all the acronyms, alphabet soup, right? So. Uh, Sunil, uh, I'd love for you to kick off this one. Uh, I'm sorry if we, we cut you short on number four, but I'd uh, love your expertise on number five. Uh, no worries. Yeah, so definitely this is a like, very interesting topic. You know, are you actually like embarking on a means to end or end to a means? But it's by no means, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of like a journey. Like you start out with, okay, a specific use case and um, and then, you know, and then you end up with um, extending that, that 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 particular use case to several other use cases that actually like all of a sudden prop up as possibilities on your platform, right? And, and the key is, again, you know, do the holistic planning. And, um, and then, you know, we actually like uh, with the architecture, you know, combine and, and enable a lot of different types of like network and security capabilities, you know, that that actually, uh, you know, are, are actually uh, prior to SASE were not possible. So we we actually bring this as a, as a platform capability versus a, a product capability. So uh, so I guess you know it, it, it you know it, it all depends on planning, like we have mentioned, like you know in the from the beginning, right? It, it's it's like uh, have you know, well thought out plan to see like what, what the end state you want to be in. And along the way, you know, what are all the use cases and what are all the problems that we are trying to solve at strategic points within the, the digital infrastructure of the enterprise, right? Whether it be, you know, the branch locations or private or public clouds and, you know, uh, and, and where your journey is, uh, is taking you as well, right? Because, you know, it's not just like a, a static target is as we progress, you know, um, you know, we're going from one cloud to like multiple clouds and hybrid clouds. And, you know, more often than not, your, um, your assets actually are actually spreading across like multiple different clouds. And, you know, how do you maintain security? How do you maintain compliance, you know, while, you know, growing this digital footprint, you know, and evolving, you know, in this digital transformation. So, where this SASE architecture fits in is, uh, you know, it's actually like, uh, you know, enabling this that secure infrastructure where you can actually get all of your application workloads, the devices that, that are actually accessing these applications, and ultimately the applications and data security. Uh, so, so you, you need to like, you know, go through this like journey, and so it, it all starts with the right education and and the types of possibilities there are and approaching you know these problems with the, with the right um, you know uh, capabilities that are, that are available on the platform right so so that's 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 how I, I would put it you know for this particular topic all right appreciate um, it so we have about two minutes one, left so um chris yeah, bro, do you want to one big piece though to add for Sunil is like anybody that's selecting ssa if it's just being chosen or selected based on can it provide cloud-based security? Probably the wrong approach, because if you believe in what I said in the beginning, that we know branch traffic and everything's going SaaS applications, then you need an SSE solution that is grounded in SDN, SD-WAN, routing network, et cetera. So I would just say like, as you do go through that evolution, SSE cannot be 
um, segregated from that core capabilities around what you do with SaaS apps. So like that would be probably number one this or number two compared to um, is it unified? Because just having another technology that handles my remote users work from anywhere, that just adds another technology. It doesn't reduce vendor sprawl. And like those are two critical reasons why a customer will want to select something else. So there's a lot of others, but I would just encourage people that are out there think through like how do you handle those SaaS apps? And also does it reduce the vendor sprawl? If not, probably keep looking down the path for those other technologies or see how it fits in operationally. So just all right, I appreciate that. So just to wrap up, um, appreciate everyone joining. It was an outstanding session, a lot of great content. Uh, let's carry on the conversation. So for those that attended today, thank you for joining. Um, please reach out to us at info at versa-networks.com. Uh, and we're happy to uh, answer any questions or additional content that you have. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.